gentlemen, this is going to be nice and relaxed, as we can see already. So we've got that. Who's, who's got your drink? Got your drink? Put your drinks up. So we're all nice and relaxed. We're all drinking. You know, three water. Types of... <laughs> Come on, Brownie. You've never been a water man. That's only water. That she won't get me it. <laughs> so I want to talk about, um, we, we, you know, this is the first time we've done this as a, a three-way thing for a, a long, long time. But I want to talk to both of you about your, your, your careers. We're going to touch a bit on your pre-order shop days, when you were together. And although we're not Wombles TV, it would be remiss of me not to talk about your time at Wimbledon, of course, because, um, you know, some fantastic times. But firstly, Terry, I'll start with you firstly. Talk to me a little bit, because I've got here about your playing days first. You played for your hometown club in Hayes. And talk to me a little bit about your footballing career first. Well, before we do that, my wife bought me a warm Budweiser. That ain't no good, darling. I can't drink a warm <laughs> Nobody can drink a warm Budweiser. That's ridiculous. Come on, oh, Susie. <laughs> water it is. Uh, sorry, Graham, what was the question again? I've forgotten now. Um, no, talk to me about your, your time as a, you know, before anything about management, coaching. You played for Hayes. You're the, the black and white days. Hey, black and, white, black and white days. No videos. <laughs> yeah, Talk mine, about Terry was Brown, a, footballer. mine was a, a less than illustrious career. Um, started off okay as a, a young boy going into uh, the team that I watched. I used to go with my father and watch Southall on a Saturday and Hayes the following Saturday. I don't know what I'd done to deserve that, but. Obviously, that, that's what I had as a young boy. Um, I got into the Hayes side when I was 18 years of age. And um, I'd had trials with pro clubs, but basically I wasn't good enough. Um, so to play for my local team was a real honour. And um, I was lucky enough to play on the same side as Robin Friday, who then later on become a legend at, uh, at Reading. And... Uh, was to this day the best player that I'd ever played with. I never played with Stu, by the way. Um, and if I look at my time there, it was all glorious. Uh, local lad um, getting £3.50 in my boot every, after every game. And I can remember, uh, I think I was earning £6 a week on a gas board. So... £3.50 for playing football was a real joy. And you talk about Robin Friday, obviously, by all accounts, uh, one great character who was a, a rule to himself and, um, and nobody else could rule him. No, he, he taught me in a way. I mean, I, I played in the same district side as him and he was always mad as a hatter. And he had unbelievable talent. And I do believe that he was a bit of a genius on the pitch and could have been anything he wanted if he hadn't obviously gone off the, the road a bit. But he taught me a lot about management, believe it or not, because I played under a very strict disciplinarian called Bob Gibbs at Hayes. And he was a justice of the peace and he was a headmaster. And... I used to call him Mr. Gibbs and everybody used to call him Mr. Gibbs, even the senior players, Bobby Hatt, Les Artridge, we had some great players at Hayes. And uh, Robin used to call him Giblet, Giblet and Chips or Giblet or whatever. And I can always remember, we used to in them days, this is how old I am, I used to wear a suit to a game, shirt and tie and have a meal afterwards. And... Uh, uh, we also used to play Christmas Day, by the way. Um, so wow. all them whinging Jurgen Klops, you know, where were they 45 years ago? Um, yeah, back to the story. And we, he come to the, the players, this would be about 1972, something like that. And he come to all the players and said, look, boys, um, you've all got to wear suit ties, club ties and everything. Um, but Robin's not going to wear that because he was like a hippie. He, he wore great big yellow lapels and everything and a big 
uh, great big shirts and, and Larry hippie gear. And he, he come to the players and said, look, you're going to have to wear this. You're going to have to do this. Robin's not going to adhere to that. What do you want to do? And the players all had a vote and went, yes, Gaffer, that's fine. He said, don't come to me whinging artwards that, you know, Brownie wants to wear a, a hippie shirt as well. No. And it taught me that even such a strong disciplinarian would uh, understand that Robin wasn't the same as all of us and accommodate Robin's gift because he won us games and he was a wonderful, wonderful lad. He was just different to everybody else. So that taught me um, that even the strictest disciplinarian, you, you've, you've got to be, you've got to be flexible when you're dealing with human beings. And that wasn't always the case in the 1970s, I have to say. And you went to Wokingham Town and, and, and you are their, their record goal scorer, so I'm told here. And, and, and to be fair, Wokingham Town were a, were a decent side in, in those days and you know, they had a lot of trouble uh, later on in the year. But uh, during those days, they were a bit of a force. Yeah, I'm glad you got my notes through about the leading goal scorer because <laughs> I've just read something about Cash and he scored one goal in his life, I think. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, um, I, I had, I went between Hayes and Slough, Hayes and Slough, Hayes and Slough, and Slough was where, where I met my lovely wife, who gives me warm Budweiser's, and um, that that was 46 years of marriage yesterday, by the way, Graham. Wow. My anniversary. Well done, Susie. I cooked dinner, I cooked crackers, flowers, everything. I was a top man. Um <laughs> yeah, at Wokenham, again, a different type of manager in Roy Merriweather. There wasn't really a coach, but managed the team and had a great eye for players and had a great eye for um, building up team spirit and morale. And we used to get – they're still my drinking powers to this day. I still go drinking with them. Um to this day, and and we still tell the same stories, although they're I'm not saying they're getting old, but they change every week now. <laughs> and and go on to Stuart, because you had a bit more of the conventional way, Stuart, because you you went through through, um, through Nottingham Forest, uh, and Brian Clough was uh, was one of your first managers. Yeah, he was. I mean, obviously before that, Graham, I I. Came through the roots as what what Terry did, as in I played uh, non-league football for a, for about eighteen months, two seasons, I think he was just under two seasons for Ailes Own Town. That was my local team where I lived. Um, obviously, came out of school, went to Wolves as a as a youngster. That didn't work out for me. I wasn't really ready physically or ability wise for it then. Then I then I went to play non-league and. Um, Alzo had a, had a fantastic history. That was they won the FA Vars uh, back to back. I think it was that was before my time, and uh, I played for them for a few for a few games, and then uh, Forrest signed me from there, and uh, I signed a, I think it was a two year contract to start with. Um, so I went obviously from non league, the same as Terry. Then I had lucky enough I had that, I had that chance to go and play or be around professional footballers at the time. I didn't, I didn't play at all at Forest. I was loaned out most of the time, but that was uh, obviously pre, pre the sky money. Um, so I enjoyed my time there and, and learnt an awful lot of, as Terry spoke about management, about treating people the right way and um, treating them as human beings. And we all learn as on our journey and I learned a great deal of, you know, not playing for Brian Clough as such, but being around him every day, being involved in training and his methods, and uh, it was a it was a fantastic time for me. And you, you are an FA Trophy winner, of course. You did uh, whilst you're at Wickham Wanderers in in, um, in a loan spell there. You, you played at Wembley, won the FA Trophy. Yeah, I did. I was lucky enough to play there, the old Wembley, which was, you know, I still remember that to 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 this. I don't remember an awful lot. I'm now, now I'm getting older, but I can certainly remember that. Uh, yeah, I went out on loan to to uh, my first club was Rotherham under Billy McEwen. 
uh, a tough Scottish manager who sort of uh, ruled with an iron fist. He couldn't step out of line in any any way. That was my first experience at league football. I think if I'm right, Graham, I made my debut against Leighton Orient. That was my league debut, I believe. Um, and then I was there for three months, which was the maximum loan spell. Uh, I still had a year and a bit left on my contract at Forest, so I went back. Then I went to uh, Brentford. I think that was my next team. And I uh, played for Phil Holder, where for first sort of time in had experienced in London, in London, London area, which I did. I did well there. We had a fantastic team, and um, later on in our in Terry's and mine management career, we actually a few of the old Wickham boys came to to play for us. You know, Jason Cousins and Simon Stapleton and and players like that came came and uh, played for for Terry and myself. And I've got one game here when you you played for Chesterfield up at Liverpool, and uh, it sounds yep. like a pretty bizarre game. That was one of my other loan spells. That was uh, the management was Chris McMenemy then, Laurie's Laurie McMenemy's son. Um, so I, I'd actually left Forest then. I'd, I was at Forest for three years, and uh, come to the end of my contract. And I was I was out of contract, and I signed a two year contract for Chesterfield. And uh, in my first season, we had a good good side there, and um, we played Liverpool in the oh, I forgot what the name of the cup was. It's the old League Cup, the old I don't know if it was the Rumbelows then, Graham. I can't remember what it was. It changes every you know it changes all the time, doesn't it? Oh, I've just got League Cup. What sorry? I can't I can't remember. League. Milk, what the milk cup was it? Milk. Yeah, so you were so old. It was a milk cup. Yeah. Well, it may have been. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it was them days. It was two-legged affair. So we we played at Anfield in the first leg. We was um, Graham Soonis was the manager. It was one nil up, two nil up, three nil up, three one, four one, and it ended up four all. And I've got to say, a brand new hammer me for this. I wasn't at fault for any of the goals. <laughs> no, that was the- what I would say about that game and I've had the misfortune to watch it on a team bus was Stuart put it on and so all the boys have got to watch I can't I don't know what team we was at at the time and we're watching this game at Anfield and after about 10-15 minutes I'm thinking what's Cashy put this on for he's getting absolutely murdered by the little winger Uh-oh. little winger Got the ball, run past him. Little winger gets the ball, drops his shoulder, goes around him. Little winger gets the ball. Then about, I don't know, must have been 20 minutes in, little winger gets the ball. Cashy's launched him over the railings at Anfield and the boy's a mess. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I see why he's put that on. <laughs> that, was, that, was, no, that, was, that was Mark Walters, that was. England Mark, Mark Walters. went on to play for the yeah. Rangers. I'm not I'd, sure he played much out of that. <laughs> I'd, I'd watched the video the week before and Chris McManamy said to me, Cashy, he went, he's got this step over. He goes one way and he goes the other. Keep your eye on the ball. So, I, okay, Gaffer. So I watched it over and over again. And uh, first five minutes, he did the step over. I went one way, he went the other. So I, I'm not getting it. I'm not, I'm not grasping this. I need to book up. And Terry was right. After 20 minutes, I stuck him out in row, row two. And uh, <laughs> we played OK that game. <laughs> and we lost the second leg. And then, of course, in the mid-90s, you were playing for Chelsea Town as a, a player assistant manager. And, and, and you, you, ruined the, um, you ruined the day of a lot of Aldershot fans, Jill, on the last day of the season for Chelsea because... Uh, the rules were that we had to beat Newbury, which we did pretty comfortably 3 0. And if we did that, as long as Chertsey didn't beat Maiden at uh, Basingstoke, then we'd get promoted and, and Chertsey would stay down. And then you're, you're 1 0 down, 1 1. And then I believe you scored the winner that got Chertsey promotion and, and kept all the shot down. I did, yeah. I came out of football. Um, I finished my actual my football career finished at Wickham with Martin. I had a uh, a knee injury so then I came after you know after 10 or so years playing football I came out of it and into the big wild world and I think you know what do 
Terry was lucky. He had a he had his management career. He had obviously his career in the work what he did as well. I hadn't worked for over ten years, and um, I say work as in you know outside football. So I hadn't got a clue what I was going to do. And uh, I had a phone call from um, Matt Crosley, who was my ex Wickham teammate, and he went, uh, "What are you looking to do?" I went, "I don't know." I said, "I'm just going." I just moved to London with Barbara, and we we sort of was living with Barbara's parents, and I hadn't got a clue what I was going to do. I knew I could carry on playing football, but only at part part time, sort of non league level. So then, you know, money was still quite good in like non league football, but I had to go out and get a job. And uh, he said, "Come and play for Chertsey." My my boss, I work for him, and he is the owner of a football club. So I said, "Okay, I'll give that a go." I went down and met him. At a job interview, he says, yeah, come and do a bit of work for me, but you need to come and play football for Chelsea for me to give you a job. I says, okay. And uh, I was working for him for 25 years in the end, and he was a fantastic guy. Um, Love football, put a lot of money into Chelsea. We had a really good team, some really good youngsters, Chris Sparks and the likes of that, who Terry knows, who Terry went, he went, he went to play for Terry. And uh, that was the start of my management career. I played there for a, a season, season and a bit. I did a little bit of coaching. And then I went into coaching at uh, Enfield. That's the way it started. Yeah. Graham, what I can remember of that goal, it was a 25-yard top corner, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it. I just heard that you scored. I think and it's <laughs> from about 10 yards, I think. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll come to you joining all the shot in a minute. But we'll just go back to Terry, because... So, from your playing days, Terry, you, you, you're on the coaching staff at Wokingham Town. And then in uh, 1993, you joined Hayes as the manager. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to uh, coach, started off with the resis at Wokingham and then the first team. And that's a, that's a real difficult jump when you're coaching your mates. They're all my drinking partners and still are. And to go from one of the boys into the first team coach was incredibly difficult. I had to have a fallout with a, a couple of them and just explain, look, I wanted to take this serious. I was taking my badges. I wanted to, to go into coach. I wanted to go into management. And I was lucky enough that they knuckled under. And and to be fair, they were a good side. They they, I worked alongside Ernie Howe for a while and Ernie Howe's team got to the semi-final of the FA Trophy. Now, wow. when you look at Wokingham, you think, blimey, have they got that far? But we had a really good side uh, with a fantastic team spirit and that was what I took with me to Hayes. I uh, applied for the Hayes job, didn't get it the first time. And then about a year later, Derek Goodall rung and said, are you still interested? And I took over at Hayes in a perfect time. They were rock bottom and they they were totally unfit. Well, I, I remember taking the bleep test in with me and it was just a bog basic, you know, beep, 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 the one we used to do. Uh, but it was measurable and you knew, I knew from my boys at Wokenham, you know, how many, how many they could do, whether that was 15 or... 14 or whatever it was, and these lot couldn't even do 10. And I'm thinking, Yahoo, it, it, it can it can only be a win-win. If, if they're not fit and you, you're taking over as a manager, you think, well, if I sort that out, I'm 90% there because they had some half-decent players and they had an half-decent budget. And uh, I was lucky enough to work with some of the best lads that I've ever worked with. And again, I still go and have a Christmas drink with them. I still socialise with, with, with some of them. And they were, it was in the days of Harry Bassett, really. It was in the days of, um, we played route one ugly football. And I'm, I'm not saying Harry done that. Harry was the most successful manager ever with the, with the resources he had. But um, the, the style of football was get it up to the front people, plough for them. And we used to bully people at the back. Honestly, we were we were the ugliest team ever. Um, I think of 
all people, Graham Roberts called us a team of nightclub bouncers. So I don't think Graham Roberts was the softest man in the world, was he? Um, the pinnacle was really Pippin Enfield to the title. I'm not sure if Stuart was there with uh, George Borg, but oh, George Borg was. George Borg was at Enfield and Graham Roberts at Yeovil and Little A's beat him to the uh, to the Premier Division Championship and, and that was then automatic into the conference. So the standard of that, you know, there were some good teams in that. And to be honest, we used to bore the pants off of most of the opposition. Um, we used to win 1-0 every week. And, and I think... In Stuart and I's first year at Aldershot, we ground out results with a big, strong, ugly team. And, and there was a lot of, there was a little period where I think if Paul Buckle didn't score, we didn't win. And we sort of went 1 0, 1 0, 1 0. And Bucks seemed to score every week. But that was one of Stuart's signings, by the way, and one of the best signings we ever made. Yeah. <laughs> and that, 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 Promotion or that championship you, you had when you said you, you you picked Enfield, it was on the last day of the season, and I think you did, you did it by goal difference. Oh, it was incredible. We had in them days you didn't you had mobile phones, but they were the size of a house, and uh, we had a chap up at Yeovil, and I'm not being funny, but um, Stuart will, will, will give me the nod on this one. We we had to we had to beat Car Shorten and they were third in the league, and George Borg had to beat his best mate, Graham Roberts' team at Yeovil, and I would have bet anything. <laughs> I would have bet anything that George Borg's team won, and they did, mm -hmm. and uh, we won three nil, and if we hadn't won three nil, and we won by one goal margin through the whole year. And I have to say, George Borg was the first one to pick the phone up and ring me and congratulate me. So, you know, George is like all of us. He's not a great loser, but he was fantastic on that day and, and rung to congratulate us. So go back to you, Stuart, because we talk about how you joined Aldershot now. And of course, George was, uh, was the reason because he was appointed manager in September 97. You just joined him at Enfield as, uh, as a player assistant there. And of course, he asked you to, to come along with him to Aldershot. And well, firstly, was that an easy decision? Uh, it was, it was, Graham, because um, I'd left Churchill and went to play for Enfield. And I realised that was the first time at Enfield that I couldn't really carry on playing at, at, at a decent level because I, my body had just kept breaking down. So I I, just, I didn't go there as a coach. I went there as a player to help out with the coaching. And then after a couple of weeks, I started taking warm-ups and doing a few sessions. And then I became a first-team coach. There was, there was obviously George was the manager. There was uh, Graham Roberts was the assistant manager. And I joined as like a as as a player coach. So I started doing it that Graham left, he went to be a manager somewhere else and then helped George and then George got the Aldershot job. What a palaver that was. That was that was a story, but that was probably it's probably too long to go into on on this session. Um anyway, he got appointed and then I had a phone call saying, Would you like to come as 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 uh, my assistant manager? And that was the you know, the start of my sort of management career. And then we, we came over and uh, got a job and sort of settled in and it was obviously part-time then. So I just married my work in with my football. And, and you say it was a palaver, it certainly was. And uh, I, I, suppose, I bet you, you, you packed your bags to come and then you'd unpack them because it was off and then it was back on and then it was off and I didn't look like it was going to happen. happen then, times, I think. <laughs> we even had a press conference. Typical to turn up. He won't mind me saying this. I know he won't, but obviously he did everything, you know, and rightly so in some some occasions for the benefit of George. And uh, he wanted, you know, to be fair to him, Enfield went about it the wrong way. They was in talks with somebody else, and 
it all got a little bit messy. So it wasn't a straightforward appointment. It, 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 I think it went over a couple of weeks, Graham, if, if I can remember right. Yeah, it did. Uh, it was certainly complicated, but we got there in the end anyway. And, and what a first season, because you turned something that was a little bit unsteady at the time. We were sort of hovering around with no, no consistency. You, you came in, George and yourself, and early on moulded uh, a squad together with some some early signings. Got Otis Hutchin, Jonathan Hipperlite, Gary Phillips came in, in goal, a bit of experience. And the season turned on its head and, and, and you won the league. You were when, when he joined... You were eight points behind the leaders, but won the league by 11 points in the end. And it was a terrific season. It was. It was very good. I mean, similar to what Terry said earlier on, it was the team spirit was really good. We had Otis Hutchins and a few of them. You know, Johnson Hippolyte, who's a, still a good friend with um, with Terry and myself still. Uh, we had a great team spirit. And, you know, we, we knew that, obviously, we had a big fan base there and you had to sort of entertain the supporters. But... You know, we did. We played some decent stuff, but we we, we used to win a lot of games, and uh, the camaraderie between the lads was very very good, and uh, we had a really good season that year. Yeah. Anyway, this tea went right all over me, so obviously I've reacted to that, and I've gone flying at him. That's what. Uh... That's what we're about. We're a, we're a top conference side, and uh, I think we we gallop. Like I said earlier, we weren't ready to go up. We gallop beyond our means, and and yeah, you're going to get a reaction. And...